Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today I want to share with you some images that I've been recently sketching and getting quite excited about. Um, and I just wanted to chat through them and then I thought it'd be great to look at the things that are making me really excited and see if I can capture those in this sketchbook play session that I'm going to have with you today. So if you want to grab yourself a drink, maybe grab your sketchbook and some materials and let's just have a cosy sketching time together. The weather outside at the moment is very changeable. There's a really cold wind that is coming in at the moment across uh, the Lizard Peninsula and we're getting sunshine, but we're also getting really, really heavy downpours. So I thought this would be a great time to actually come to my sketchbooks, see what things I am enjoying working in, what kind of processes I'm really loving, and then see if I can just capture those elements and redraw them in my sketchbook. So I've got three sketchbooks. Um, that I've been working in. I've kind of been working across multiple sketchbooks because it means that I can do a few different sketches at the same time. So when one is drying, I can work on the other spread. And then whilst that's drying, I can work on another one. So this is my Moleskine sketchbook. And I just thought I'd show you a just a few sketches that I've been doing ones that I've really enjoyed since the start of the new year. So this first page is of Mullion Meadows and the woodland, which is just around that area. This was painted or sketched on top of pre-painted pages, um, a really yellow ochre colour. And what I really love about it is the warmth and the light in this picture. I just really love how working on top of a different colour ground to say just white pages just gives you a completely different experience of sketching and it also makes the process quite a bit faster as well if you already have pre-painted pages. So this was done back in January and it's actually a sketch that I recorded um, the audio of so if you want to listen to me sketching this and what I was thinking as I was doing it. And you can find that on my Substack newsletter. There is a, a podcast called Explore and Draw and you can listen to all the episodes on there. And then this sketch that I did recently, very recently, along with a couple of others that I'll show you in a minute. This was also done on pre-painted pages and again uses a golden yellow colour background. And I also mixed in some darker browns this time, as well as adding some salt. And yeah, I just really love the marks in this one and how the, the brush marks are coming through the drawing. Just makes me feel energetic just looking at this picture. So the next two sketchbooks are from the same range of sketchbooks. They're by the Dilution Ranger sketchbook. And these are two of the sketches that I wanted to show you. This one, again, done on a pre-painted background using a very harmonious colour scheme. So that will be on the colour wheel. You have like blues and greens together and... Um, I thought it really works quite well harmoniously. And then this one, which again, the background was done in advance. And <clears throat> what I like about this one is a little bit of drama. It feels a lot more painterly as well. So not so much little details, but more shapes and textures. And then also some unusual colour choices for me. Anyway, I was really looking at the colours that were, were in my environment and which is why we've got some really odd reds here. But this was painted in an area of the lizard called Kynance Cove. In this area, the rock is serpentine and the serpentine rock 
has both a red issue and also a green issue. So it's why I chose red because that's what I was seeing in my environment. That This piece was actually on the same day that I drew this one and Again, I painted or sketched on top of a pre-painted background. This is a lot tighter than normally what I would uh, do in my sketches. I feel like there were so many colours going on in this piece. There was just so much that I could see. It was quite hard for me to kind of limit it down, which is why maybe I just got a bit tighter. But some of the things that I do like are the, just the overlaying of the textures here. I think that works quite nicely. And then also I really enjoyed making some more splatter marks. Um, they were actually created by Posca pens, um, which I've recently been using. I also like the movement of the sea. I think that worked quite well. And layering in a little bit of white gouache to give the impression of light and then the last sketch I want to share with you is this one. I think this is my favourite sketch I've done this year. Looking at this just makes me feel really, really happy. It makes me feel invigorated. Um, I feel I'm in the landscape. This is the reason why I thought it'd be good to kind of film this process because I want to try and capture, take what it is that I think worked and and maybe redraw it and see if I can bottle that in a way. What is it that I really found exciting about this piece? And I think a big part of it was this ground that I used, which was a golden sand colour, a liquid acrylic. I worked on location with this from beginning to end. So normally I would create these background textures here in, inside, but when I did this one, I decided to create it all in the landscape. So it meant that I was being influenced by what I was seeing. And um, yeah, it, it, I, I wasn't sure when I put it down, I thought, oh, this is really, really bright. But as I was working on it, I could see how well it was working with the greys and the blues and then the greens. And then that kind of moved me around the sketch in a way which, you know, I I don't always feel when I'm sketching, but it, there just felt like such a connection with what I was drawing and the marks that I was making. And I just wondered if I could capture some of that in the studio. I'm not sure if I will, but I thought, well, let's give it a go and see what happens and we can play with some of the uh, different materials that I used here in the colour palette as well. So I'm going to put the sketchbooks in front of me so that I can see them. They'll be in my eye line. You probably won't see them, but just know that they're in front of me and I'm looking at them. And I'm going to work on top of this pre-painted page. If you want to see how I created these, I've started a new video process series which I'm publishing just on my Substack for my paid subscribers. Each video post I hope to just explore another process that I'm working on in my sketchbook. So in that video I have created about four different background textures, talk about how I create them, you watch me make them and I just invite you to uh, create them with me. So this is one of the spreads that has now dried. So if you want to check that out, the link will be in the description below um, and you can join up for a month or you can join up for the year. There are different um, prices for a month. It only costs six pounds and I think for the year it's 60. So you get two months free and all of that will go to helping me produce more videos. So today though I think what I'll do is I'll work on this spread. I've put in front of me the materials that I 
would use on location. I have got an idea of which colours I want to use and they'll probably be very similar to the sketchbook spreads and yeah I'm just going to look be looking at the things in front of me and then capturing them here. I have no idea if what I will produce will even look like a landscape when I finished but I'm sure there will be elements that will will look like a landscape. So this is new for me, uh, just inviting you along the journey with me. So um, yeah, if you want to join along, please do. And let me know how you get on in the comments. So I really love this shape here and it is reminding me of the valley, this valley. So I think that's how I will what I'll do with this is create this into some kind of cliff edge, which I think would be nice. Yeah, so just put some texture on. This is a um, intense block and it's great for just creating texture. I really like the idea of the sea being here and the sky, which is what I really love that, that colour works so well with the golden. I love how in a storm you get wonderful light. So I'm just thinking about that on the sea. Another thing that I really liked in my work was the loosening up the new colour just to make it I think what I would also like to include is something on the horizon and that kind of gap there, like a boat. With a sail. Not sure why the boat would be out there in this storm, but uh, we are dispensing with some reality here. It's a story. But that's what's nice then about this kind of working is that you're creating a scene that is kind of imagined but inspired by real environment. So yeah, let's... Another thing that I really enjoyed or like about the work is the contrasts and the dark areas and the light areas. So I'm going to put in this darker side.
I also really like the contrast of the sky, the blue, so almost as if the, the boat has got caught off guard. It thought it was a really nice day, went out full sail, and then the weather came in very quickly. <clears throat> and that is very true of a day like today. The weather changes so quickly. You don't really have a chance to prepare yourself, which is why you need to be prepared for all weathers. Another thing that I really liked was steps going down. Let's see if I can pop in some steps. Kind of just thinking about the shadow of the steps and how kind of season is this? This is definitely March, March, April, when the weather is so changeable. But there is life beginning to show itself. Life begin to stir. flowers but you just move that out a bit maybe a bit too bright that but we can work on top of it that's one thing I found with Posca is it's very easy to work on top of so you could get rid of whatever once it's dry So I also like the rocks that are coming out. I'm gonna just do some rock, rocky shapes. rock that are on the lizard. Perfect for birds to perch on and survey. Another thing that would be cool is to add maybe a which uh, 
I saw recently on a sketching outing in my latest uh, Explore and Draw podcast. I yeah, recorded the sounds, you can hear it in the distance, and they are very majestic. Got quite close to them, and there are a gang of six of them. Let's just put one of them in. So they're in the perfect environment. They've got quite dark feathers, black, dark black, but kind of greeny. And then really bright orange beaks. and legs. Come back to him. Another characteristic of the landscape is the lichen or lichen, which is why I think the golden sand color really works well. I am back. The uh, video unfortunately stopped working because both of my camera batteries decided to go down. So I've just kind of quickly charged them both up. Hopefully uh, there'll be enough juice in them for me to get through or finish this session. And I'll just tell you maybe bits that I've added um, without the camera on. <laughs> um, so I've added some background landscape here. I've lifted out some of the Neocolor crayon to kind of create a light coming down. I've also added some green uh, marks here and some green marks here and I'll probably just work a bit more on this bit down here now um, and then I can come back to the chuff and get him nicely finished off. This green colour that I've, I've been using is relatively new to me, it's a dark olive and I found that it's a great green for natural greens. It's a green that I do see quite a bit in the environment. I do like mixing it in with the light, I think this is olive, yeah, light olive. So one element that I really liked in my sketchbook was the pencil here. This was actually inspired by some grass that was, um, the sunlight was casting a shadow of it on my sketchbook. And I was like, oh, I really like that. So I wanted to add it. So I think I would like to add something like that here. Now you'll see that the Neo Colour in some places is resisting this. But that's that's okay. Give some nice texture. 
Webster and Marx. I've used that again here, like a pencil here. Again, this colour, it's um, the Caput Morton Violet Polychromous. Just a great colour because I do see it a lot in the environment, especially autumn, winter, early spring. Just nice to add because it just adds a bit of movement. In the past I've used my pit pencil to add this kind of movement. So basically I'm doing a similar thing but I'm just using a colour rather than just um, a black lead. So I'm just looking at my sketchbooks and seeing if there's anything else that I wanted to add. Just maybe some little marks because there was some scurvy grass that I saw growing by the stream nice to see and also celandine so just make little marks to maybe say that's happening that's growing be fun to do this in mid may when there's more wildflowers and capture them yeah there was also another colour that I used brown I think it was it surprised me brown is quite similar to that kaput mortem Let's go back to the chuff, make him a little bit darker. Add a bit of sheen to his plumage. And I'm going to leave it there because otherwise I will overdo it. And that is one of the things that I think being out on location is that you do tend to limit yourself. You have a time limit. Either the, it gets too cold being outside, it's maybe too windy, um, or you just don't have a lot of time to spend outside. It kind of limits you from overdoing something. Um, so... Yeah, 
that's one of the benefits of working outside is that it keeps you uh, on your toes and it keeps you moving, keeps you overthinking things as well. So, yeah, I've definitely enjoyed doing this, but at the same time, I can see um, my tendency to overthink things and spend maybe too much time working or overworking something. That's something I could probably change by having a time limit. Um, yeah, but anyway, that's what I've done today. I hope you enjoyed uh, joining me for this sketchbook play time, sketchbook kind of drawing from your drawings. Let me know in the comments if you also drew from your drawings today. I wonder what you uh, drew. I would definitely call mine like a moody Cornish landscape, early spring. And yeah, I've enjoyed it. Okay, uh, if you reach this point in the video, let me know by writing moody skies. Hopefully you're well and I'll speak to you again very soon.